welcome to Retech and today we're going to look at the Commodore Amiga again. We've um, did a little bit on the A600 in our last episode, the um, little Amiga 600 here, and we're going to use the same machine today because, well, they don't get used enough. There's a lot of stuff out there for the A500s, the Plus, the 1200s, and largely the Amiga 600 seems to be forgotten, but I'm going to use it today because I've got quite an, a kind of weird, really, a very weird application for the Commodore Amiga range. And it kind of fits the 600 well because it's kind of closer in a way to the machine that it is going to emulate. And that is this. It's the Commodore emulator for... BBC Micro basically, it takes um, what you would normally run on a BBC Micro software wise and allows you to run it on a Commodore computer. It seems quite strange really and I've kind of thought about it a little bit and I've kind of wondered why you would actually want to run BBC software which by this time when the 600 or even the 500 came out was almost a decade old and things moved on very very quickly in the kind of gold rush of the 1980s of the 8-bit era and they didn't quite move on so fast in the 16-bit era which is where the original Ataris and Amigas and kind of all of those platforms came out and it seems a bit bizarre to me why you would actually want to run what at the time would have been very old BBC Micro software on a modern machine such as the Amiga which had a lot more power it um, was a lot more capable had a lot better graphics a lot better sound and was a generally a better machine all round than the earlier BBC Micro unless you wanted connectivity then the BBC Micro kind of won just about everything hands down. So I kind of started looking at it and I thought, you know what, I'll get a copy of this. I found a copy and um, this copy, until I opened it, had never been out of the uh, packaging or the cellophane. And um, it seemed a bit of a shame to actually break the seal. but. You know, these were meant to be used and um, there's no real point of them sitting around gathering dust, so to speak, with no one having any experience of what this was all about. In the package, all you literally get is this very thin manual, which is very badly printed. I mean, it's so badly printed that even the, they couldn't be bothered to separate the pages. I mean, it's not very good at all but it comes on a, a single floppy disk um, which is again very basic a white label um, printed on what looked like a dot matrix printer at the time with um, the Commodore logo on the bottom of each label so it looks like there's just a generic Commodore logo on a pre-printed label and a dot matrix printer printed the information which said to emulate the BBC Micro on a Commodore Amiga. I mean, it doesn't even say which Amiga, it just says Commodore Amiga. So, with it being quite an early disc, um, you know, it would work across most of the Amiga range. So, let's have a quick look at this very bizarre system to emulate a BBC Micro on a Commodore Amiga. This was long before we had emulators emulating the Amiga and emulators emulating the STs and all of the other now classic machines of the time. So emulation has been around for quite a long time. So let's have a look. As I said before, it's not brilliant. It's quite flimsy. It doesn't really cover a massive amount, but it kind of covers enough just to get started. As I said, this has just been opened and it's basically designed really to um, allow the BBC Micro to run some of the BBC basic 
programs and it is BBC basic it really kind of runs to be honest more than anything um, and it's kind of an emulation of the BBC micro under basic so the the point of this software really if you kind of read through it is um, creating the emulator to run existing educational software written in BBC Basic with a mixture of BBC Basic and 6502 Assembler and basically it's um, not a bad idea when I kind of first thought about it I thought well really why do we need this but I'm guessing if you've got a school with not a lot of money to throw around and they've upgraded to Amiga's or Amiga 600s and they want to run some of their old educational software well this probably would um, do the trick and it runs BBOS it's a bridge for the BBC operating system and actually you can download this onto your mobile phone today uh, so it's kind of stood the test of time but you know it's not 100% guaranteed to work and um, you know if you kind of look at the way the manuals printed it's probably doesn't give you a lot of confidence really in the the actual emulator itself um, but you know we might as well have a look at it and see what it can do the the only thing really that this emulator really is used for is connecting your BBC and your Amiga via a null modem cable to transfer the data to this machine and that would be um, a good idea if you were kind of sat in a, a computer lab at school and now you had loads of these modern Amiga 5s and 6s to use for their children and to also not to spend out so much on educational software if you've spent already spent thousands of pounds at the time on software that the children can still use so I kind of see where it's coming from so let's take a look at this emulator now the first thing you have to do really is run Amiga Workbench on the machine because the actual software isn't natively bootable so let's get this started up with loading workbench okay so really you've got workbench loaded which you know takes about a minute or so so you've got to now take the old workbench disk out and uh, then you have to put in your BBC micro emulator and it's quite straightforward but as you probably realize it's going to take a little bit of disk swapping so the emulator icon kind of sits down here and it reopens a new window and basically you have a few different icons as soon as they load and you have the emulator itself okay so the emulator itself here now this is the one you actually load to make the actual BBC emulator run so to speak but you'll also notice that basic is separate so what it's doing is it's loading the emulator and then using this file as the original BBC basic ROM so it's emulating loading BBC basic from ROM into memory so if we have a look at this and then we'll launch the emulator and now again we have more disk swapping to do so it's another disk swap and this is what would probably quite you know probably be quite annoying because you've got another disk swap and it so it goes on until the actual program's loaded so I'm not so sure whether or not using this in a computer lab for a skill would um, really be that effective because of the amount of disk swaps um, but there we go we have 
the emulator called the emulator loaded and this is their DFS, the disk filing system for the BBC which is what you've got on the front end so the normal kind of catalogue command brings up exactly what it is. Now you kind of going to think well is that it? Is that all you can do with it? But no you can actually run BBC Basic. So one thing you'll notice is once you've done your lines like this is that it won't run because the Amiga is a more modern machine and it defaults into standard lowercase when you've booted the machine so you have to make sure that you have the machine in uppercase so if we do this again And now run it. There we go, we got the standard kind of this is BBC basic loop that everybody used to do when they had a look at any any 8-bit machine at the time in any computer shop. So it runs the way the original BBC would run under BBC basic, so which is a brilliant thing and most of the commands will work so most of the basic software does actually run fine on this so I've had a, a bit of a play around with it so even sound would work the envelope not so much but the sound commands work um, you know and all the other circle draw line really works a treat so again if you wanted to play around with BBC basic on an Amiga it's not a bad way of doing it but I'm still not quite convinced about all the disk swapping in a classroom setting but it's, it's a nice way of doing it really and it has a bit of a speed advantage over the original BBC so if you click the left mouse button it comes up with paused which is a nice touch and you can go back to the front end. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through how you would run software. Now you have things like drive 0, 1, 2, 3 etc. Now if you open these up you have a blank space so you can actually drop your folders or files into the drives and then you just run it as normal as you would on a standard BBC using the disk filing system. The boot icons here are basically the program itself so just to give you an idea you can run boot zero and what it does it will attempt to run it but it will give you a quick flash of what the actual emulator is calling there you go so that calls the front end and so on and there's also a readme first file which is quite handy it's probably no different to what's in the, the, the very poor manual but it basically states the same contains special commands to allow existing files to be transferred from a BBC with DFS by means of a serial cable and it gives you the pinouts if you want to make your own up which is good so that's what this major readme file is for the, the second readme file Basically, the, just what I've explained about your drives, drive 0, 1, 2, and 3, and you can put your own programs and files into. Okay, and the boot files are startup files to load the emulator, which um, I hadn't actually read this before, but that's how it was kind of logical at how it actually worked. So it's just giving you an idea of, you know, what it does. So it also includes a few demos on here, and they're, they're quite handy to give you an idea of what the machine can and can't do. So if we go to learn, which is quite apt really for um, the era of the BBC Micro. Now again, it's a disk space, but it's no slower than a, an original BBC Basic or BBC Micro. And 
here we go. This program was originally written for students to follow the City and Guilds 424 co course in information technology at Northampton iTech, so not far away from really where I am anyway. And iTech was the was kind of a government-based initiative at the time to get people into information technology after they left school. So this was um, originally designed to get them through their course. Now it's it's a basic understanding course for the terms and how computers work and so on. But you know it's nice to run through these kind of things because it's not something you would ever really need to do today. So do I want sound? Yes, and you get the BBC speaker sounds. So we're going to continue, and then you get a choice of questions okay so you'll be given a series of questions and answers and if you look at this it's all very much what it would look like if it was on a BBC micro you know if you didn't have the Commodore Amiga in front of you you wouldn't really know a lot of difference from the way it's working so we'll just continue so if we go into types of computers just for a giggle okay so again it's given you the, the basic 1980s education of what a computer was at the time. So mainframes, they were kind of almost dead and buried really by the late 1980s. Minis were being um, swallowed up by the micro as well because the micros are getting more and more powerful with more and more storage towards the end. So these first two machines were actually sort of dropping off of people's radar mainframe really became a server and the mini disappeared altogether so um, the micro is what you're using now it's a commonest commonest form of computer really their English isn't very good it's the most common form of computer it is to be seen in large proportion of companies and it costs approximately 500 to 2,000 pounds much less Okay, so whoever wrote this really needed to go back to their English class. Uh, much less the mini or mainframe. Okay, much less than the mini or the mainframe. So often called a personal computer or PC. Well, yeah, at the time because the um, IBM PC was really not on the, the cards when this was being written. So let's have a look. So we'll go to the next frame. So we're going to go through to dedicated computers and it's going to run you through single chip microcomputers. Um, it's going to again w run you through the electronics and you know what the differences are between each and so on and it's, it's good for a bit of history. Uh, I might cover this in a bit more in depth in some other kind of video really linked to something else that I'm going to do but as you can have a look at it, it looks like it's running in standard BBC colours, standard BBC modes, standard BBC text, so it's very good from that point of view. So, and then it's going to give you a rough outline of a silicon chip because that's the option I picked. So yeah, I mean, it's quite impressive really for the time when you think about that the Amiga itself, it was a huge step up from the BBC Micro, but it wasn't an, an exponential step up in power. So to, for it to run anything and emulating anything at this point is, is quite good. It's very, very good and it shows you how much thought's gone into this. But I'm still a little bit... Um, the jury's out, so to speak, with um, how useful this would have been. As a looking back kind of thing, it's great, it's great fun. So, let's see what else this can do. So, if we go back to here, well, we've got demos, and I'm kind of assuming it's more on the same veil. So, let's have a look at these. So yeah, it just looks like more kind of children's style programs, um, play train, toy shop, bricks, etc. So yeah, 
these are um, educational programs for children so um, it's it's quite good really when you think about it because I mean especially if you run in the nursery where you don't have a lot of extra capital to lay out on new software um, yeah it's good it's brilliant the way it works so this is just an educational thing to fill the train with 14 people by using one or three so yeah it's not bad so um, yeah at the end of the day it's quite a good emulator so yes I've got a very similar emulator on my mobile phone uh, which does what this does and this was decades ago and the current version which you can download from you know Play Store or any kind of um, repository that for Android etc will allow you to run roughly the same kind of stuff although the the modern version for your phone actually comes with a lot more applications and software within the same package and it's got a lot more games so it's it's actually been improved because it can handle more of the kind of um, lower level programs and games so it would be able to run a lot more than what this machine or this emulator could actually run but this is quite impressive really for what it is and I kind of I do see where they were coming from with this um, emulator and I do get it to a point but I'm kind of thinking that the crazy disk swapping you know really when you think of it compared to a modern emulator would kind of put me off a little bit at the time but thinking back on it I'm not so sure now because you got to think when these machines were current messing around with floppies and multiple loads for even for games and multiple floppies was kind of par for the course so um, yeah I've kind of changed my tune a little bit on this um, I think it's very good I think it had a place I don't think it's got much of a, a place really now unless it's for finding out what retro emulators could do um, but in general in general I've enjoyed playing around with this I've enjoyed using it and I'm quite glad I did actually open this and took it out of its um, hibernation for the last 20 years or so so if you gr get a copy have a play make a null mode M cable up and transfer some of your files if you've already got a BBC micro if you haven't pop your files onto floppy disk there's a lot of programs out there which will allow you to for your modern PC to copy data onto a floppy drive to run on a, a Commodore Amiga or you could put a GoTech drive in and just run it directly from there and that would probably solve a lot of the problems okay but you know whichever route you want to go and you want to have a bit of a mess around with what it was really like running a classic BBC even if you don't have the original have a go at this it's worth a try and I kind of changed my tune on it so I hope you've enjoyed this episode on um, Commodore Amiga 600 or the Commodore Amiga range and the BBC Micro emulator and I'm kind of guessing that most people wouldn't have realized that we've been emulating machines from almost day one mainly because of cost mainly because of necessity but just shows you emulation isn't a modern thing so thanks for watching please subscribe and I hope you do and I hope to see you on this channel again shortly so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you soon <laughs>